Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick look at the NVIDIA GTX 980. This card is priced at roughly $500 US dollars presently, maybe even less. I know it was over the holiday weekend, and in my opinion, it represents one of the best values if you're looking for best-in-class performance in a single card solution. Of course, having this in SLI isn't a bad option either, but today we're just focusing on the 980. This is a reference card. You can pick it up from either PNY or EVGA with regard to manufacturer choice and the card is identical either way. It is a large card, but part of what Maxwell brings uh, to NVIDIA's latest generation or member of the GTX family is, well, first and foremost, of course, better performance. We have uh, 4 gigs of VRAM on board. Uh, the GPU has a clock speed of over 1100 megahertz. You've got over 2000 CUDA cores, so there's quite a bit of power underneath uh, this single card solution. Uh, the cooling design or uh, method hasn't changed. Of course, NVIDIA has added, much like on the Titan Z I shared with all of you the other day, uh, metal back to the board to address uh, those of you wanting to throw their cards into SLI, having better flexibility with how close uh, the cards come to one another. But I don't want to get into that now. Key thing you'll notice right here is the actual... Uh, pin layout for the power. The wattage you're going to need for this card is significantly less, and that's part of what Maxwell is all about. Not only are you getting better uh, performance for all of your games, even 4K at that, granted that uh, 4K has, I would say, very realistic limitations with only 4 gigs of RAM on card, which is one of the reasons that I was interested in the Titan Z to begin with. Uh, but focusing on the 980, when it comes to raw performance in 1080p, this card is very difficult to beat. And even in initial tests, at least from what I've seen against the Z, again, in many games, you're going to see better performance possibly on this card, uh, not necessarily on the minimum frame per second uh, performance, but at least on the max side and maybe even stable. Uh, but this card is a beast, no question about it. You can see right here in terms of port selections, uh, you do have a DVI, and then you have three Display Ports as well as an HDMI port. So they have accommodated everything that you could possibly want. Uh, this is pretty much the modern layout of what you're going to see on cards, so that you can easily support three displays uh, for G-Sync, uh, surround essentially with three displays using those Display Ports, and then if you want to also utilize the HDMI or DVI, you do have that flexibility. Now in SLI, this card. Uh, you know, it's only going to get better once it has a twin. Uh, and with regard to performance, again, it's really difficult uh, to beat. AMD, I'm not going to get into the war. Uh, there are those of you that prefer NVIDIA, those are, and of course, those of you that prefer AMD cards. If value is all you're after and you're willing to compromise on, I would say, the heat, power efficiency, and of course, uh, the actual how uh, the noise factor, because that's another great advantage of the 980, basically all of NVIDIA's cards, that's the direction they trend in, then uh, AMD may be the best option for you, no question about it. They make some incredible performers. Uh, when it comes to, again, heat, power consumption, and noise, that isn't their specialty. That's where the 980 comes in. So it is a beast of a card. You can see relatively large. I'll eventually be directly comparing this to the Titan Z, which has you know 12 gigs of RAM, essentially SLI on a single card. So you've got two GPUs. And really, even though they shouldn't be compared, trust me, they are comparable when it comes to at least basic gaming. Uh, the real difference from what I could tell you on paper, at least, is that that extra RAM aboard the Z, as well as all of those CUDA cores, uh, even though it has a slower clock spe speed, because we are going back a generation uh, to the 700 series, uh, as opposed to the 900 series that we're looking at here, the Maxwell Gen, uh, you lose out on that uh, power efficiency, uh, clock speed, but again, 12 gigs of RAM, even though 6 are visible in the SLI config, that's going to give you uh, future proofing that this card simply doesn't have in the 4K world although it's probably going to be marginal, but I have to do some testing before I can really tell you much more. But again, uh, the design of the card is great. Uh, overall, just a really nicely made reference card, as NVIDIA generally does. You know, the controllable LED here, which is nothing fancy, but uh, pretty much the calling card for the brand. And it's built like a tank. Uh, I remember the days when cards weren't something to actually enjoy taking a look at. Those days are far gone at this point. So uh, the 980, when it comes to 1080p ultra performance, is going to give you some best-in-class 
uh, overall performance at its now sub $500 price point. And you can go for all sorts of overclocked varieties if that's what you're after. Uh, but just even going reference like this, especially in SLI, is going to give you one of the fastest gaming machines on the market. I'll be updating all of you on performance and again doing ultimately a comparison of my personal uh, preferences between this solution, even pondering that SLI config, uh, against the Titan Z single card solution. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.